All right, what's going on to all tactical backpack enthusiasts out there? What's up to all Alice gear enthusiasts? That is who I think is going to be watching this video. This is my, uh, not necessarily a review, but just kind of like an overall talk about a pack that I've been working with for the last year and a half now. This is the Spec Ops Recon Ruck. Uh, this has been an interesting project that I've been messing with for quite some time. And uh, after messing with it and adding some things to it and just overall trying to use it for the best that it can be used for, I think I have some two cents to share with it. Uh, if you were to look up this pack on YouTube or any other online videos, you know, if you type in Spec Ops Recon Ruck, you'll, you'll come across video after video, uh, people talking about just how incredibly good it is, how amazing it is. Uh, and it is good, don't get me wrong. Before I start ranting on the negatives, it is still a very nicely built uh, rucksack. It, um, it will handle anything you throw at it made out of very nice materials uh, but it is not perfect and uh, I'm going to be talking about things that are not perfect about it and the Alice frame that it, that I uh, got for it um, so let's see where are, where did I want to start like I said before I started talking about negatives I really do like this I use it all the time I, I find ways to use it and all that good stuff but just know it is not perfect so here we go uh, to Spec Ops, the actual company that makes this pack. If you are watching this, I hope you can make these simple adjustments because I think if you do, it, this thing will be a real, uh, uh, not necessarily a 10 out of 10, but it'll be a very nice pack if you do so. Uh, complaint number one. I know that this was designed and copied after the original Alice pack that was around for the U.S. military for like 30 years. Um, the thing is, just because you copied it does not mean you have to do it verbatim. So, the buckle placement for the original main compartment up here, you know, uh, here is the main compartment that you have to lift up the, the flap for. It's connected here at the bottom of the pack with these two buckles on this side right here. The thing is you have to reach all the way down here to lift the whole thing up like this. And I just have a pillow in here just to kind of puff it out, but you get the point. The thing is, I don't really quite like having to reach all the way down here in order to lift up the flap. So, which leads me to the second thing I want to do, or talk about, and that is the buckle placement. If, if they were to put the buckles right here on this side versus all the way down here, what they will do is will not only limit the reach of what you have to go all the way down to, you know, unbuckle it so that we can get to the main compartment. But the thing is, when you put a, 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 a shooting mat or a sleeping bag or a, a sleeping mat, anything that goes across like that, that you throw the flap up on top to secure it down. If the buckles were up here, that would actually create kind of a barrier so that way it wouldn't slide down. What will happen is if you do have something underneath the flap right here and you hit like a corner or a wall or something like that, the whole thing will shift. And if you don't have these straps, where is it? If you don't have these straps really singed down when you hit a corner or edge or whatever, it's just gonna slide. And I just did not like that. So. Again, by, by just simply putting the buckles up here instead of all the way down here, that can probably eliminate that problem. Um, that's just one little thing I want to talk about right there too. Number two, you have to use some, uh, some imagination on this one. Please ignore this gadget pouch right here that I have. Uh, I just got this because I want to put my keys wallet cell phone in this thing. But you can see how it comes with Molly on the top, which is a fantastic idea. I think that's a really good idea. However, these straps, when you first originally get it, they're going to come in an X-like pattern that's woven into the molly. I honestly do not know why they did that. Um, you can tell that I've I've weaved it back so it's parallel to the pack, like what original Alice packs come like. Um, what you have to do if you want to do like what I did, you have to weave this buckle in and out of the strap right here, and these little things are such a pain to try to weave in and out of that buckle. Then you got to weave it back through the strap. <laughs> then you gotta put it the way you want it to then put the buckle back on which again that was that was you know my fingertips did not like that I gotta get needle nose pliers to do that but once I had it then it was fine um, I honestly for spec ops I don't know why they chose to you know uh, put it on the shelves with this X like cross pattern when with with the straps I, again I just I don't know why they did that um, number two or I'm sorry number three things that I didn't like and this one was a real disappointment, in my opinion. We are looking at the bottom portion of the pack right here. This one, I really, again, I do not understand why they did this. Um, you see that there are these two fixed straps right here. There, there's nothing that can adjust it in any way. There's no buckles here. There's, there's no D-rings. There's nothing. 
the bottom of this pack has these two fixed straps and they don't do anything. Um, you, you, it's, it's not really big enough to put a jacket there. It, it's certainly, it's not big enough to put a shooting mat or a sleeping pad. But the thing is, again, I don't know what they were thinking with this. What would be awesome is if they did have detachable buckles and look at, look at the Alice frame right here. You could have weaved that through the frame and it could have really singed this pack down. Or you could have had long straps and you could put a sleeping bag or a jacket or anything you want under here. Uh, someone in the comment section might say, oh, you just, you could put it here and then stuff your, your rucksack and it pushes it down. Yeah, do you know what? I don't want to deal with that. I don't want that. What I want is detachable buckles somewhere here that I could take the straps off, adjust it, put something on the bottom of this pack and really send something down. I really think that this was a big waste of space. Uh, you, they had a lot of potential to do something with this. And again, I don't really know why they did that. Um, anyway, whatever. But uh, yeah, that, that was another big complaint. Lastly, you kind of have to use some imagination. Uh, give me a second, please. Give me a second. Kind of moving this with one hand. Again, this is just a pillow, so ignore this. But here we have a buckle right here. What is this used for? You have this hydration bladder section right here. There are two flaps here. The one that's closest to the compartment is, is it's more horizontal than it is vertical. And I don't know what you can really put in there. It's too shallow to put a laptop. It's not vertical enough to put a hydration bladder. I don't really know why they have this section here. So then the next thing someone's going to say is, oh, well, this deep part right here, that's for the hydration bladder. Okay, well, problem. There's a foam, let's see if you can see it. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick it up. There's a foam pad right there, which is excellent. You actually don't wanna remove that, even when you get a frame. You don't wanna move that uh, because every little thing is gonna be poking into that frame. Oh, I'm sorry, the, the opposite. The frame's gonna be poking into anything that's in that, uh, into the bag. So the thing is, when you don't have a frame here, maybe you can utilize the space that's in there, but again, um, I just don't see how you're gonna be able to make a hydration bladder fit in here, especially when you have this pack filled up. When you have it all filled up, it's gonna take a lot of real estate in there. And I just, again, when you have a three liter, three liter bladder, I don't see how you're gonna be able to use it. So I have never used this buckle before. Uh, I think it's kind of a waste of material. I think I would like to have this material stretched all the way over here. I wish that this, the receiving side of the buckle here was on this side so that way I can pull it all the way here and singe you know a sleeping bag or shooting mat whatever you want on top of there um, that's just my two cents on that matter uh, did I cover all four things I wanted to talk about I think I did yeah okay so one of the cool things about it is is the molly and how yes it did copy the the Alice type of style with the three large pouches on the outside and the make apartment in the middle um, that that's actually extremely universal. These outside pou uh, pouches are really handy for putting a lot of light, fluffy material in there. Uh, all you know, your clothes or anything that's not significant that you just want to get out of the way. But the Molly is kind of cool. I, I like how they do it. To me, obviously, you can tell I got pouches all over the freaking place because I like Molly. It's like a Lego set. You can take a pouch off, moving around. So hydration. I got my canteens on the side. Got these little gadget pouches. I put flashlights and wires and crap and like that. Anything I need. And so I think I just want to, want to talk about that actual main section right there. Now, let's talk about the frame. So a very important thing that I want you guys to think about, if you're thinking about getting this pack, it is not good to have it without an external frame. Okay, this is coming from someone who has done a lot of hiking, a lot of backpacking. I've used backpacks for many, many years and many different things. Um, if this particular pack is designed to be used with an external frame. If you can pull it off using it without it, oh, you know, all, all the all the money to you, all the, all, all the better for you. But I will say, having 25 pounds on your shoulders, you know, with no other additional support is going to suck. And if you have this pack fully loaded with whatever you're going to carry and you're going to use it all day, then I think you're going to find yourself being very tired. Another thing is, without a frame, this whole, your whole back is just going to get sweaty. There, there's no ventilation at all. Uh, this whole part is just going to lay flat up against your back. So you really do want to get an external frame. Uh, the issue with that is it's going to cost you more. And this is where some clicking on the mouse has come. This is where, you know, you got to do your reading. Because in a sense, there are two types of frames that you can go with. On the one hand, you can go with an Alice style frame. On the other hand, you can go with what's called a 1606. Maybe I got that name wrong. I just know it's 1606. And um, that's a plastic frame that the U.S. military has been using for quite some time. 
it does work. Um, you will find arguments online, people saying, oh, metal's better, oh, plastic's better. Frankly, I don't care. You use whatever you want to use. Me, I wanted to go originally with an Alice frame, so clicking around the internet, it's kind of hard to find a new one, but somehow I did. I, I found a brand new Alice frame, totally fine, absolutely, you know, it's brand making new. So, one good thing about the Spec Ops Recon Ruck, the straps that it comes with will absolutely work just fine with the Alice frame. It works, again, it, it works totally just fine with it. Um, so once I have this whole thing set up, then I got a belt. Um, unfortunately, this is not the original belt that I bought. I bought this other belt from Amazon. Um, and when I have the whole thing set up, everything's complete, I take it out for a local walk, and the whole thing is just rocking like a... Uh, Oh gosh, it made this horrible seesaw-like noise. Just the, the grindiness of the straps up against the bare metal was just nails on a chalkboard to me. I could not get over it. Um, uh, even people walking by were looking at me like, what in, what in the world is that sound? So going back to the internet again, looking around, figuring out how I can make external frames and Alice frames not so squeaky, there's a couple different methods that you guys can try. Uh, on the one hand, Guys were saying uh, to use uh, electrical tape or tape in general. I tried that. It worked for a little bit, but then stopped working. Uh, read somewhere to use talcum powder or baby powder. That actually did work. Uh, use baby powder. It actually did work. However, that's that's temporary. You can actually still see some of it on the strap right here. Um, however, what I noticed is if I take the, the white strands of the inside of a paracord and wrap this anywhere that the strap is going to contact metal, that, act, that noise actually goes away because it just re it reduces that friction that, that's going to create that seesaw like irritating noise. So I really like how that did it. Uh, there's still a little bit of sound, but you know I'm not trying to be Mr. Stealth person with this pack. Um, the waist strap, by the way, is again I got I got a newer one. So the original one I got had no molly on the side of it right here. Um, it was actually harder to adjust, and it was actually even harder to put on. Uh, I'm not sure if it, give me one second guys. I'm sorry. Let's see. Let's see if I can get a good shot Again, I'm only doing this with one hand Yeah, anyway, you get the point the whole point is that I really am happy that I got a much better waist pad It's easier to adjust much easier to adjust and I, I like I said I do like how you can put the freaking molly patches on the side um, Same thing the hip pad that I originally had was very squeaky um, I tried tape I tried talcum powder and it just it just kept squeaking this one doesn't do it as much It still does what I'm probably going to do is do the exact same thing with the uh, the paracord strands, the white paracord strands that I have up there. I'm probably going to do that here, and that problem should go away. Um, in the middle, you guys might be wondering what's going on with the middle. Give me one second, please. In the middle, so let's go back to the pack itself. These D-rings right here are what the straps actually connect to at the bottom. When you add a, a frame to it, these straps are going to be flopping around, so I just used some paracord to help singe this to the, the frame itself. This is a waist belt that the pack also comes with. This waist belt is actually much too, oh, how do you say it? It's too high on my midsection. Uh, I'm six feet, and this thing was like, up where, like where my upper abs were. It was, it's up there. It's not, how do I say this? Do not rely on this to use this as a support in any way at all. It's, it's a thin, wide strap with a big buckle. Yeah, so, so yeah, with a big buckle, and that's all it is. It's not going to help you. Um, oh, you know, it's, it's just more good. It's it's more of just going to help you pull that pack closer to your body. But that's it. It doesn't do anything else. Um, so what I've done is just use these two things to just help singe the pack to the frame. And like I said earlier, I wish that the pack had those straps underneath so that way I can singe it closer to the frame. Uh, one thing that I have noticed about this frame in general, though, is that when you have it on, it's going to take up space in the pack. So if you got used to filling up your rucksack with X amount of gear, and then you add an external frame to it, what happens is it's going to push, you can kind of see how it, it's going to push all that room farther in. And as a result, you may not be able to fit as much gear as you want. Now, on the other hand, though, you will be a lot more comfortable. It's going to be heavier. I'm not gonna lie, this pack is actually really heavy. Uh, with all with all the volley crap and all the pouches and the frame and everything, um, I do not know how much this weighs, but what I'm gonna do, guys, is weigh it just by itself. In, in the description, I will have all the information that you guys might wanna read about. Um, yeah, every time I make a video like this, 
there's always going to be something that I just forget to add. So read the description down below before you ask any questions. Um, but nevertheless, this is a very heavy pack. Now, one thing somebody might want to ask is, well, you know, what's the difference between the, the plastic frame and the, the Alice metal frame? The, the aluminum frame is actually just a little bit heavier, not by a whole margin, but just a little bit heavier. Uh, you can, by all means, you pick whatever you guys want to pick out, but I went with the Alice frame just because, uh, you know, I grew up in the eighties and nineties and I saw all the Alice gear and I wanted, uh, I wanted an original Alice pack, but they're all worn out and I wanted an external frame and I don't know, you know, I just kind of just went with, with the original frame because that's just what I wanted to go with. Um, no matter what I do though, here's the ultimate statement. No matter what I do. I think this pack will always be like a 7 out of 10. It will never be a 10 out of 10 in my books, no matter how much I try to work with it. Um, it's just, it, once again, it's just, it's very heavy. It's not the best pack for hiking. It's definitely not the best pack for traveling. You, you definitely you don't want to bring this pack on an airplane. It's just, it's too cumbersome. It's too bulky. Um, there are better packs out there that you guys might want to spend your money on. And I'm trying to think of anything else to add. In the meantime, I always hate wrapping up a video because other ideas come into my head. Um, what do I use this pack mainly for? Honestly, I use it for, uh, uh strengthening. So I'll, uh, when I want to get ready for a hike, I'll, I'll carry this guy, fill it full of heavy items and I'll just walk around the city, walking my dog and, uh, strength, you know, strengthens out my back and my shoulders, that kind of thing like that. It's a great range back too, by the way. Uh, once you have the frame, once you actually do have the frame set up in, the, in a nice hip belt, um, you, you can carry some seriously heavy stuff with this thing. Uh, we're talking like ammo cans and water and freaking spotting scope, uh, uh, trenching tool, all that kind of stuff. You can carry a lot of real heavy stuff with, with this pack. Uh, the material that it's made of, again, if, if you find a way to break this pack, then I don't know what the heck you're doing, man. Once again, I'm trying to think about any last thing I want to add, but um, instead what I like to do is just add any more details in the description below to anyone that's actually watched this. Pretty much the main reason why I made this video was in case if anyone's thinking about getting this pack, because do I recommend it? Actually, I do not recommend it. I recommend that you look for something else and that you you uh, decide what you want to spend your money on because this pack is very expensive. With the frame, with the pack itself, with all the pouches and the belt, you're looking at, I don't know. <laughs> I got to do the math. So um, do your research, guys. I, uh, I hope this was informative to somebody out there. Uh, I still have a lot of fun using it. Um, some people have actually asked me, Hey, what kind of pack is that, man? That's a, that's a very different idea, a very different design. So it's going to catch some people's eyes because you just don't see packs like this walking around everywhere. Um, once again, I, th I think that's all I want to say to anyone that's actually watched this. I hope this was informative in some way and thank you for watching.